Take a look around and everything you see is somehow influenced by mathematics. From the construction of your home, to the functioning of your banking system, to even how you're watching this video. We're currently living in a world that revolves around mathematics. So it's hard to believe just 2000 years ago we didn't even have a universal number system. Or just 20,000 years ago, humans were just carving markings in bones to represent numbers. Clearly mathematics along with humanity has evolved a lot. And this development occurred across three distinct stages. These are the rhetorical, syncopated and symbolic stages. Let's start at the beginning with the first stage, the rhetorical stage. Here mathematics was characterised by the use of words and verbal explanations to represent concepts. This incorporates almost all prehistoric and ancient mathematics until around 1000 BC. Humanity began by first using body parts as a way of counting, to documenting numbers as tallies on ancient bonds. Eventually we see a move to writing down descriptions of mathematical problems. An example of this is the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus, which was written in ancient Egypt around 1650 BC. This contains a collection of mathematical problems and solutions written in symbols. Over time, through the problem solving capabilities of mathematics, it became central to society and we developed towards the next stage. The syncopated stage is characterised by the use of symbols to represent mathematical concepts, and there may have been some overlap between the previous stage, with different civilizations arriving to this point at different times in history. But we can see evidence of mathematical symbols as early as the ancient Egyptians and their use of fractions. However, turning towards the ancient Indian civilization, we start to see significant documentation of mathematical results. We see results from mathematicians such as Bodhayana who compute the square root of two to five decimal places, and more importantly, the widespread efforts in this civilization to develop the system of modern numbers. This is a Hindu Arabic numeral system which was developed in ancient India, and we see evidence as early as the first century CE evolving from much older predecessors. This was perhaps the most important discovery in the syncopated stage. We finally developed a universal number system, and it enabled scholars such as Brahmagupta to make significant contributions to mathematics. We also see examples of syncopated mathematical notation through the works of mathematicians such as Thales, who is often regarded as the first mathematician, and Euclid, whose work on geometry led him to become the author with the greatest longevity in history. And finally we come to the symbolic stage of mathematical history, this is characterised by the widespread use of formal notation to represent mathematical concepts. We start to see this emerge following the developments in algebra by Al-Khwarizmi. He presented methods and solutions, as well as a standard notation that was widely accepted in the Eastern civilizations and later adopted by the West. And in addition to this, he also assisted in spreading the Hindu-Arabic numeral system wider. And this is where the development of mathematics starts to explode, and the language of mathematics becomes universal. We see works from Indian mathematicians in Kerala lay the foundations for the field of calculus that would later be developed and ratified by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz in the 17th century. The key thing to notice is that mathematics is just being used to describe the world and solve problems. The only thing that's changed is the language. We change from using words and ancient poetry to an inconsistent set of symbols and eventually a universal language where mathematics is described using the same conventions. For more insight on the rhetorical mathematical discoveries, check out this video and consider subscribing for more content. Thanks for watching.